Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to Airbrushing for the Beginner. Tips and tricks. Now I'm going to run through some bits with you in today's video which make my life easier. So if it makes my life easier when it comes to painting, it will make your life easier when it comes to painting. And that's what it's about. You don't want to be struggling. I've struggled at the beginning with brushes and things and paints and and I'd rather you not struggle and go through the hassles that I had when I first started out. So take a little bit on board in this video. I'm going to show you some products that will really help you out, some tips along the way. So we're going to start off with brushes because we all sort of, when you get into this and you're sort of either tipping your toes in airbrushing or you want to go full time and it's in your mindset, yep, I want to paint some pieces that are going to go in a gallery. I want to paint things for people like automotive. I really want to get into it. So brushes. Now I've got two brushes here that I would recommend. Now I'll leave a link in the description with a discount code DreadFX20 on the Everything Airbrush site at the Fine Spray, the AB range of brushes. Now there's 20% off on this range of brushes, guys. As a beginner starting out, you cannot go wrong for the price with these brushes. You really can't. To have a practice with, to start getting your trigger down, putting some paint down, you won't go wrong with these. You really won't. So I'll leave the link in the description to that. So head over, have a look. Got some great write-ups on these brushes. Tells you all about them. So that's that bit. Then you're going to move on to, you've done say six months, a year, say, with your cheap brushes, a cheap compressor, and you think, yeah, I'm really getting into this. It's now time to upgrade and get a new brush. So there's brands out there, guys, and you think, well, I've started off with the budget range. What brush brand shall I go for? Because there's Iwata, there's Creos, there's Badger, there's Rich Pen, there's Harder and Steenbeck, and you think, mm, what do I go for? Now, I'm going to point you in the direction of one brand, and the reason why I'm pushing this brand to you guys is, one, they're a robust brush. Two, they're the easiest to clean. Three, they're very, very versatile with their brushes and needle and nozzle setups. I would say they are the only brand that give you every option and have thought of all the options for the brand that they are. And it is H&S, guys. It really is. When it comes to H&S, for your sort of next brush, moving on from a beginner, they're just they're just built well. The coatings are really good. They they last long because that I've had that since day dot 13, 14 years, and it's still going strong with no dramas. The parts are really reasonably priced. The parts are easy to get hold of and the needle and nozzle setups are all interchangeable. You don't get needle and nozzle setups like you do in the H&S. You don't get that in the Creos range and you don't get that in Iwata. When it comes to Iwata, you buy a 0 0.2, that's the brush and that's the needle and nozzle setup that it comes with. If you need to buy a 0 0.5, you've got to buy a different brush. If you need a full on detail brush in a 0 0.18, You've got to buy a custom micron. It's they've limited you to basically make you buy that brush to buy that brush. If you want a side feed, you've got to buy that brush. Yes, you'd have to buy a side feed in the HS, but if you brought the side feed in the HS, you then could change the needle nozzle setup combos for that brush. And that's what makes these really good is the adaptions that you can you can adapt these you really can because the parts fit across the brush range and they're easy to strip down and put back together and clean and maintain and that's what you want with an airbrush you don't want something that's going to be 
fiddling around with a spanner, a tiny little spanner, and then you've got to buy the kit to take the nozzle out, or the, you just want something easy, and that's, yes, the other brands are brilliant. I what are, they are brilliant brushes. They really are, Creos, they are brilliant brushes. Creos are good at price points for what you're getting on price. But an out and out, all rounder, for easy use, easy change, it's H&S. Just have a look at the H&S range, guys. They're really good, I'll leave a link in the description, as I could babble on about brushes all day. H&S, have a look. Link in the description, everything airbrush, cover all the H&S range, and you can get all the spares, everything to do with H&S, they cover it, so check them out. So that's a little bit about brushes. We're gonna move on to artwork when you're a beginner, because we all wanna paint pieces, you know. You see all these in the studio, the bits that I've done on the channel, and things like that. <clears throat> and it looks, oh wow, this guy can paint. But I started where you guys started out. I started with the little squiggles and the mistakes and the dodgy looking pictures because we all start there guys. Now my advice is as a beginner on artwork, it's like most beginners, it's like they're at the 100 meter sprint and they can see the photorealistic piece at the end and they just bomb towards it because they want to paint like all these pro painters on YouTube that are doing photorealistic pictures that look like photographs and they're all rushing to get to that goal. My advice is don't rush to be like everybody else up there doing the photorealism. Choose your own style and stick to it and adapt your artwork because everybody in airbrushing is it's all about photorealism, going down the photorealistic route, and it's like, it does my head in. I think choose your own style, adapt a little bit of that photorealism look into your artwork and make it your own. Because photorealistic work is photograph to photograph, photograph, and it's all what everyone's, it's like, oh, there's a printout of what, and look, I've painted that, you know, it looks like that. So when you come to sell that, someone could go, well, mm, your realistic work there that you've done, that's 600 pound. I've just hit that button on that printer, ka -ching, and I've made that for 50 pence on a photo piece of paper. Mm, same image, uh, 600 pound, a quid print. You know what I mean? This is, this is where it's going. This is where everyone is jumping on the photorealistic. Yes, I do like photorealism in airbrush work, and I do adapt, but I keep my own style and make my own twist on things instead of following everybody on the conveyor belt of airbrushing going down the photorealistic route. It just seems like, you know what? Find your own style tweak your images with a little bit of photorealistic in there and make them your own. And just artwork's about creating something new, fresh. It's art changes all the time from graffiti art to, there's just so much of it. Just make your own style. Yes, we can all copy, we do copy. Airbrush artists are very good copy artists. That's what we are. A true artist in my eyes is someone that can have a blank piece of paper in front of them and they can paint from the imagination straight down without looking at a reference to go from. They just paint and they produce a piece. Airbrush artists to me, are, we're just good copy artists because we copy what's in front of us. Unless I say you're an amazing airbrush artist that is a true artist where you can just airbrush straight down where you've got no reference or guidance you can just create they they're the ones that amaze me when it comes to artwork so that's a little bit about when you're moving into your art and what to sort of do don't rush and head for the 100 meter sprint to get there because it won't happen guys you've got to take your time 
practice, go on a few courses, and it is good to go on a photorealistic course. Now, the reason why I say it's good to go on a photorealistic course is you can pick up a lot of techniques along the way on how to put paint down, how to manipulate paint, how to achieve that look of that image of that photorealistic way. It just gives you them techniques and it's a lot of techniques because spraying photorealism is its very weird when you see it, when you see people do it because they're just sort of puffing paint. It's the manipulation of paint, I think, is what photorealistic work is. It's how you can put the paint down, overlay the paint, take away the paint, manipulate the paint, scratch in text. It's not all done with an airbrush. Photorealistic work is not all done with this. People think it is, but it's not. It's erasers, different shields, different textures, templates. It's all the other things involved to get that piece of artwork. So it is good to go on a course to learn it because you will, you'll go on a, a photorealistic course and it will absolutely blow your mind. You'll walk away absolutely scrambled and you think, oh my God, I can't remember anything. But then when you come back to your artwork and you start painting, you will probably pick up about four or five tips. I guarantee it because you, you they try and push that much into your skull in them three days of painting. You'll walk away, but you'll walk away with little tips that you can put into your artwork. And you think, ah, I'll pick that up like that, and I'll pick that up, and I'll pick that up, and just adapt some of it into your artwork. So yeah, they are good going on. So we're moving on to next is getting your artwork across, because a lot of beginners you'll paint for a year and then you'll start doing pictures for friends and family and then you'll get someone come up to you with a motorbike or a, a bonnet of a car and they go right can you paint this on this and you instantly go yes I can because you want to take it on because it's your first job and it's like you've, you're in that hundred meter sprint race again because you can see the finished goal and <clears throat> they've waved 400 pound at you to paint this on their bonnet it's like yeah 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 100 mile an hour again at it step back first thing you want to do is is look at the artwork that the customer wants now looking at artwork and knowing your limitations when it comes to artwork is image quality most people that come to you to get artwork done. I call them Google grabbers because that's what basically most of the people are, are Google grabbers or Pixar grabbers. They'll grab an image off Google because they've got an image in their mind. You've got to remember is these people that are coming to you for artwork to be done, they're not arty people. So they're not visually artists, they just, go to Google and go, oh, well, that's what I want. Grab that image and they download it on the phone. They're looking at it on the phone. Yeah, that's what I want, that's what I want. And then they come to you and ask you to put that image on a, say a Mercedes bonnet, which is like four and a half feet to five feet wide, because they're massive. And he goes, I want that image of that tiger on that bonnet. So you go, yeah, send me the image. So he sends it you via WhatsApp or Bluetooth and then you get your projector, what we're gonna move on to in a minute, and you project the image up and it just looks like something out of, a, of an 80, 80s computer game where it's completely blocky. You've blown it up and it's like, oh my God, that's the image he wants. I can't outline it because look how blocky it is. It's just ridiculous. So whenever a customer comes up to you, you ask for high resolution, as high as you can get it, HD quality images. Because if you have to blow it up, it will not break up. So it's nice and clear, so you can work from a nice clear image. And <clears throat> always put that side of things to the customer. You tell me what you want, send me the images what you want, and I'll tell you whether the images are good or not, because 
they can send you a load of crap out because that's what they usually do they send you crap images out and go that's what i want i'll leave it with you and then you're sitting on google trying to find a better resolution image of what they sent you and you're wasting four to five hours sitting there looking on google because i've done it for customers and you think well that's four or five hours of my time that's another hundred quid mate that i'm putting on the bill and then they look at you and go what why is it 100 pound more because i've wasted my time looking for something that you should have done from the start so just get that clear that is a big one to get clear guys with your customers when they come across is to get the right artwork across we'll move on to projectors now as i've just said in that minute ago about projecting images up really handy piece of kit to have guys if you are wanting to get artwork across is a projector now i've got one here which is called a top trio so it's not like one of your really expensive projector brands but it doesn't need to be this is an led projector 1080p or 4k image I, the resolutions on it i don't know what the specs are but i know it it projects up an absolute mirror mint image if you are looking at something like a high res image on google it just projects it across really well and that's what i've been using for a lot of my artwork at the minute is this LED, led projector and i highly recommend them guys i really do the bonus with this one when it comes to artwork i use a samson tablet for my editing for my artwork all my videos that you see on the channel are edited on a tablet. Simple, absolutely easy to do with the app that I've got on here. Now, you can mirror a tablet or your phone, doesn't matter. You can mirror them straight across to the projector. Now, mirroring an image is basically, if you've got like a smart TV and you, you're quite techy, you'll know you can sort of mirror your phone to your smart tele same thing with this projector it's wi-fi enabled bluetooth it's usb stick hdmi inputs so you've got all the inputs on the back of this one so i basically just mirror the tablet across project it up and it mirrors identical to what the image is on the tablet so that's why i say about for artwork get yourself a projector you can go the old school route some people still do where you get the acetate and you print on acetate and you have your little wind up arm that does that to the box at the bottom like i used to get at school with the magnified lens they work great but they're old school now and it's like do you really want to be wasting loads of black ink on acetate and buying acetate and printing on acetate over and over and over again then trying to store it and it's like just get a projector led projector 4k 1080p job done it will save you so much time when it comes to artwork so projector next little tip for you is tapes when it comes to sort of masking tapes and things like that i've just looked at some um comments on some airbrush forums about people asking about using masking tapes and it's pulling away the paint underneath probably because you're using duct tape or you're using like a 3m industrial tape and the the adhesion on it is ridiculous you could probably tape yourself to the wall and just suspend yourself in some of these tapes because they've got that much adhesion on them my advice is low tack application tape you can use it all round. You can use it for masking off your artwork. You can use it for drawing on. So you can pencil on this. You can biro on this. It's easy to cut. It's quite conformable because it's got a little bit of movement in it. So you can get it round some, not full on crash helmet all the way round. You won't be able to wrap the crash helmet in it to do artwork, but you can get it round some sort of tricky bends with this stuff as well. You can get it in different size rolls so you can get like i think this is a 250 or 300 mil roll you can get this right up to 1.5 meter roll on a roll so 
Really, really versatile stuff, guys, and it is brilliant for airbrushing. So highly recommend buy yourself a load of application tape, especially if you want something low tack that's not gonna pull your paint off. If you're doing loads of fine lining, you can put that stuff over fine line and then you can see your fine line through it. So you can cut on top of your fine line and pull your application tape away. I'll leave, I won't leave a link in the description to that because the best place to get that from is eBay. Type in application tape or transfer tape on eBay and you'll just see loads of it come up. Find the cheapest one. You can get medium tack, like a high tack sticker and a low tack. Go for the low tack option, you won't be wrong because it's sticky enough. So that's another sort of tip Coming across with the artwork sort of size projector, application tape, brilliant. When it comes to cutting your image, say you're projected up, you've used a load of this, because I've done this before where I put this to the surface, say I'm doing a bonnet, I pull a load of this off, put it to the bonnet, and then projected the image onto the application tape, which is on the bonnet. Pencil around the application tape, on the application tape, so say it's like I'm painting an airbrush, so I'll pencil the outline of the airbrush, and then you can remove the application tape with your image transferred on, and then you're gonna put it on a cup mat. Now, cup mats, buying a decent cup mat, everybody goes for I've got one knocking around somewhere. The green cup mats, all the blue ones that have got the yellow squares on, and then you've got the ruler like, like one to 20 down the side. So it's a square cup mat. You go in Hobbycraft and they do A4, A3, A2. I find them cup mats horrendous, guys. They really are, and I'll tell you the reasons why I find them useless is if you're working in a studio and you're in a studio like mine, or you've got a studio built like in a shed, the temperatures in the, the temperatures in the UK go all seasons in one day, guaranteed. It can go be cold, hot, wind, snow, rain, whatever. Them cut mats, if you don't store them on a flat, if they're not permanently on a flat surface, say you're doing a bit of spraying, you move the cut mat and you stand it up in the corner of the room and then it bends like that you go get in there the next morning and it's still bent because it goes rigid they're like a rigid plastic and they're sort of rigid and it you've got to get a hair dryer on them heat them up to try and get them to soften out to lay flat again you'll have that problem with them cut mats another thing you'll have problems with them cut mats is i guarantee it you'll have it on your work surface you'll be airbrushing where the cut mat is and then you will spill paint on it if you spill solvents on it it kills them because it melts into it so then you've spilt a lot of paint over it so you've got this 30 quid a2 cut mat that's cost you 30 quid say from hobbycraft you've spilled paint over it then what you do is you try and cut on it you've got your application tape and then you're trying to cut over paint runs crap all that's stuck to it and it's like oh no and then you ruin cutting out what you're cutting out on so you get that on it then you eventually get a scalpel and you try and scrape off the paint and then you gouge into it and it's ruined and i guarantee you can ruin one of them in about a month so they're an expensive route to go down where i think they're not that great and they ruin your blades because they're really hard surface so I'm going to point you in the direction of an absolute cheap alternative that you can pick up. Doesn't ruin your blades. If you doff a load of paint around it, you're not going to chin 30 quid for a new one in that size. And it is from Ikea. And it is this. And I've doffed paint over it, but quickly wiped it off. This is, I think this is bigger than, that piece of paper there is A2. So it's bigger than the A2. Just probably, yeah, a little bit wider than A2. So, Ikea. I can't leave a link to it because I don't know whether I'll be able to find it, but if you know Ikea, 
and you like to follow the yellow brick road when you go in Ikea and you follow everyone like a conga. That's the one thing I hate when you go in Ikea. You sort of like switch your brain off and start walking round and round and round. And sometimes you get the little cut throughs like the doorway to Narnia where you sort of go from the kitchen section you sort of hop through this little gap and then you end up in the screaming kid aisle where all the toys are and the parents have got trolleys and buggies and that's an absolute nightmare. So you get out of that one, go through another little cut through, which I did, and I came across the office section. Now, these are in the office section. These are, I think they're like office mats for when you're using a mouse on the top or put your keyboard on. It's one of them. So I think these are about three or four pounds for that. Now I picked one up thinking, I'll give it a go for cutting on because I felt the surface of this and I thought, yeah, that would be good as a cut mat. And as you can see, we've got little cut marks in that where I've been using it as a cut, as a cut mat. And it has been absolutely brilliant, guys, for cutting things out with. It, doesn't go really rigid. It stays flat because it's very, very supple <clears throat> and you can cut on it. You don't mind if you dot paint on it because it's cheap. And I just think it's a better option than them green, apparently self-healing cut mats. They're just useless. I think they're a waste of money. So Ikea, check out the office section. They're in there. The next time I'm in Ikea, I'm going to pick about three or four of these up for the price because they are well worth having, guys. They really are. So there's some tips and tricks for you. I hope I've not babbled on long enough. I just want to run over something else just to finish this video up. And it's forums, airbrush forums that you get on Facebook. Now, I've joined in quite a few and it, it really makes me laugh on some of them when you go on these forums. I've been painting now for 15 to 16 years. Now, the first forum that I'd recommend is the UK Airbrush Forum. If you're based in the UK, or even if you're not based in the UK, the UK Airbrush Forum is a group of blokes, the main one who runs it, knows what he's on about. Every artist that goes on there, they're just a good hub of people. And there is a UK Airbrush meet in Coventry at the end of this month, which I'll be there at, I'll be going to that. So if you wanted to come along to that, I'll leave the image of the flyer up now. So this is where it is. So if you wanted to come over and meet at the UK Airbrush meet, I'll be there with some amazing artists. There is some really good artists. There's a load of stuff there, guys. So head on down, it's free to get in. You can chat with the artist, you can see some artwork. There'll be a couple of stores where you can buy some stuff and it's just a good, friendly atmosphere and that's what it's about with the UK Airbrush Forum is if you need a question answered or you need some help advice you're going to get the right advice and help from these people because they know what they're on about guys and they've been on the scene a long time so UK Airbrush Forum one another one you can go on is airbrushing for newbies I'm on this one I do sort of go across to this forum now and again and just look at the beginners, just seeing what comments people are putting up. Now, I clocked one where this guy is having trouble with, obviously adhesion with his paint. He's obviously sort of used the wrong primer on this thing and he's had an issue. It's obviously pulled and the paint's peeled. So he's obviously thought, ah, shit, I've done the wrong thing, let's go over to the airbrushing for newbies, I'll put a post up and I'll ask for advice. So I'm looking down the comments and there is this jumped up guy that grated me on this comment and put, why would you use this when this is for bare metal, right? He puts that, do we not know what we are using? Well, that's why the guys came over to this forum to ask for advice. He clearly knows that he's put the wrong primer down. And then the finishing bit that grated me as well from this comment that this bloke had put to this young lad asking for help was, again, 
learn what you are using. Little bit of advice for that guy that's put that comment. Keep your jumped up comments, Mr. Know-it-all, clearly Mr. Know-it-all, to yourself because beginners don't need that for one, abuse when they're starting out. The guys just come over to a forum to ask for help on something. He knows he's screwed up, you know, we all screw up as beginners, but you don't need jumped up comments like that putting down because that is what knocks people's confidence. It can really doubt you when you go to paint and it does. When you make a mistake, it sort of knocks your confidence really back. And this is why I say, head over to the UK Airbrush Forum. If you get stuck, drop a comment there and these guys will help you out. Or if you're a newbie and you want some advice and help, drop a comment on one of my 620 videos. It doesn't matter whether you're dropping an airbrush related comment on the games room build that I did. It pops up on my notifications and I will get back to you and help you the best I can to my knowledge and experience. I won't turn around to you and say, as about you learn what you what you're spraying don't you know what you're doing it's like why would you say that so yeah i hope this has helped you out guys in some way with the tips and tricks i'll do some more of these tips and tricks i'm going to start doing some live feeds as well so you can get to chat we can chat you can put your comments up and i can be reading your comments i won't be painting i'll just be reading your comments i could q a read your comments and I'll give you advice, tips and things along the way. We'll have a giggle along the way because it's not always, always got to be serious. you got to have a laugh, you've got to keep smiling because if you don't, you just bury your head in the corner of your studio and probably sniff a can of thinners, I don't know. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one guys, cheers.